I've been playing around with Final Cut Pro's new scene removal feature, you know, the one that allows you to remove the background without a green screen, and I've got five practical uses for you. If done correctly, it's a handy tool to have in your arsenal of effects, and you can use it in some really creative ways. Not only that, but I've also discovered two techniques you can implement in your workflow to get the best results. So let's start there. When you're shooting, you'll want to drop out of the frame as quickly as you can. This is not applicable if you use manual focus, but with autofocus, your focus point changes if you walk out of the frame too slowly, and this effectively changes the background that Final Cut Pro will use to remove the scene behind you. In Final Cut Pro, you'll have to cut the clip as soon as you leave the frame, and then hit Shift H to create a hold frame. Select the clip where you want to remove the background and the hold frame, and then hit Alt G to create a compound clip. Then apply the scene removal mask to the compound clip. Depending on where you have the hold frame inside your compound clip, you can either select the first frame or the last frame in the drop down menu. And that is the process you can follow on top of Final Cut Pro's recommended tips to get the best results. Now, let's have a look at the five practical examples. Assuming that you have already removed the background, you can replace the background with something else. I have this still image of a different home studio and I'll just drag that below the clip of me and extend it to match the duration. Next, I'll add a Gaussian blur effect to create some depth and I'll set the blur amount to around 25%. Next, I want to match the colors a bit to make it feel more cohesive, so I can add a color wheels adjustment, and because of my blue and orange light setup, I am more blue and purple than the background, so I'll adjust my white balance to get more blue tones, and I can tweak the tint to get a bit more purple in the scene. I'll also brighten it up a bit and crush the shadows and boost the highlights to maintain good contrast. I'll probably also add some blue into the highlights, and now the background replacement looks a bit more natural. You can easily put text behind your subject. I have the clip of me with the background removed and I'll duplicate the clip by Alt or Option clicking and dragging to create a copy. You can put this above or below the clip. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how you like to work. On the bottom one, I'll remove the scene removal mask effect. I don't want my audio to be doubled, so I'll select one of the clips and hit Ctrl Shift S to separate the audio and delete it. I'll hit Ctrl T to add a basic title. Let's type five practical uses and change the font and the size. I'll position it the way I like it and then move it between the two layers. You can have it appear by leaving it like this or you can select the beginning and hit Command T to add a crossfade transition so that the title fades on. Or you can even add some animation by using this free effect from Tap 5A that lets you create quick and easy animations. I usually use a paid plugin called AdMotion to do my animations in Final Cut Pro, like I did in the intro to this video, but this free one from Tap 5A is pretty great as well. I'll leave links to both of them down below. You can make the subject of your shot pop from the background by grading the background and the subject separately. I have the isolated clip of me again. I'll Alt or Option click to make a copy and remove the scene removal mask on the bottom one like before. Then on the bottom layer, I'll add a color wheels adjustment. I can darken the background by dropping the global brightness and maybe I'll saturate it a bit too. I can drop the midtones to darken it even further, but I'll bring the highlights up so that the lights aren't too dull. Now I have a nice punchy background that I'm nicely separated from. Of course, you can also add a color wheels effect to the top clip to grade your subject separately. And in this case, I can boost the highlights and crush the shadows. Here is a quick before and after comparison. Another fun way to use the scene removal mask is to add effects to your subject only. I have the isolated clip of me and the background underneath. I'm going to duplicate the isolated layer and place it between the two clips. I'll hit Ctrl Shift S to separate the audio and then delete it. Then I'm going to create another compound clip of this compound clip in the middle. I'll trim the new compound clip to where I want the effect to take place and then I'll double click to open it. You'll notice that this highlighted section is what we'll see in the main timeline. So I'll add a transition to the beginning of the clip. It could be anything you like. I'll go with the color distortion glitch transition, which is a free transition that you can download. By the way, if you want more free transitions and free plugins, make sure you check out my website. I have some of my own, but I've also curated a list of free transitions and effects for Final Cut Pro. I'll leave a link to all of that down below. With my transition added, I'll extend the duration so that it covers this area that will appear in the main timeline. If you look to the left of the middle of the transition, you'll see that it's all black. 
That's because there's nothing before this clip to transition from, so it shows up as black. To the right of the middle of the transition, you can see the effect taking place. Make sure that the middle and anything to the left of it stays out of this highlighted area. Now, a very important step. If you right click on the transition, you need to uncheck this transition to from black option. Let me show you what happens if you don't. I'll go back to the main timeline and you'll see it cuts to black when this clip starts. So I'll open up the compound clip again and make sure that transition to from black is off. And then when I go back, we have this cool glitching effect of me happening behind me. When you've separated yourself from the background, you can clone yourself. You can either do it by separating yourself from the background from multiple takes, or by combining the scene removal method with some masking. Let me break down the cloning section from the beginning of the video. I have my first take where I delivered the first line, and then I just stared at the camera. I applied the scene removal mask to this clip the same way I did before. I have the second take where I hid behind the chair and popped out to deliver the second line. I'm purposely out of focus here because I wanted a shallow depth of field and the plan was to pop out from behind the chair unexpectedly. Then I have the third take with the third line. Lastly, I duplicated the third take and created a hold frame like I showed you before to essentially create a background for the last clip. This is important because on the second take, I added a draw mask effect to cut out the right side of the frame so that I could have both clones behind the original shot of me. I also had two color wheel adjustment layers to darken the background and to brighten up my face. When you put all of that together, you have a pretty fun and easy to do cloning effect. There you have it, five practical ways to use Final Cut Pro scene removal mask. If you enjoyed this video, then you need to watch my five practical ways to use Final Cut Pro's built-in object tracker next.